started off like any other year. Late night movies, movie theater visits, vision boarding, more movies, household keep up, beautiful crisp winter mornings, in-person classes, dentist appointments, pet cuddles, more pet cuddles, Friday night pizza runs with the family, errands to run, bookstores to visit, coffee, pets, pet visits, more pets, more Saturday morning errands to run, and random strangers willing to come close for talent. Costco visits, more coffee, goodbyes to working kids, prepping for classes, the winter blues in full effect, coffee shop dates, more trips to the dentist, the occasional baking, car washes, and of course, Saturday morning coffee. We dreaded yet another grueling semester, walked to classes, worked out, studied hard, and enjoyed Friday night sushi dates. February was just as blissful as January. More pets, overcrowded kitchen, and weird, weird parents. Life started to pick up in February as I prepped to launch my pitch in my very first startup company. There was late night walks across campus, study sessions, article features, time with friends. Did I mention coffee? We met in person, studied in classrooms, and enjoyed the people around us. We went to restaurants, bridal showers, and Believe it or not, even each other's houses. We worked really hard, we stressed, we leaned on each other and enjoyed the small things in life. Like taunting our pets with delicious treats, we celebrated our achievements. Did I mention we worked really hard? There was a lot of late nights, time spent on our computers, trips to campus, late dinners, and of course the occasional abusing of household members. And then March hit. March started off like any other month. There were long days and the most exciting news that came to our campus was the introduction to robots carrying food from building to building. There were late nights studying and time out with friends. Little did we know that that would be the last night we could see each other. March 10th is when everything changed. It's been a very crazy couple days across America. And as the president has so eloquently said, the main goal of controlling this coronavirus is to simply keep the death down. Shelves were completely desolated and Ohio was declared in a state of emergency. It's really bad, really bad. COVID-19 made itself known. Classes were moved online and we thought it was the beginning of a two week vacation away from responsibilities and our colleagues. As we prepared for lockdown, we really weren't ready for what happened next. Thank you to all the toilet paper hoarders out there because I hope you're staying clean through all this. I'm not. The bread aisle was completely desolated and there wasn't a toilet paper roll in sight. <laughs> There's no OJ. <laughs> what? 2020 people. This is how our year is going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the heck? We're loading our cars. About to stay in our houses for five weeks. It's gonna be a good time. Right, Mom? Such a good time. Such a good time. <laughs> I spending time with my kids. Oh, yeah, it's great. Thank you to Ohio Governor Mike DeWine for encouraging all Ohio residents to order copious amounts of carryout food and alcohol for the foreseeable future. Stores closed, banks closed, everything stopped, and it was literally as if the world had stopped spinning. We leaned on our furry friends for support and braced ourselves for what would happen next. We learned how to make our favorite foods at home, such as sushi, took exercise from the gym to our homes, and abused our puppies with fresh lemons for entertainment. And sometimes we went a little crazy. We were introduced to words such as quarantine, social distance, six feet apart, and elbow bumps. We spent our days working in our pajamas and binge watching Netflix series. Zooms and WebExes became the new norms and we invited our professors into our bedrooms. And then we Zoomed. 
and then we zoomed some more, and then we zoomed, and we zoomed, and we zoomed again, and then we zoomed some more. Working from home became the new norm. April was the month that we all lost our sanity. Two weeks turned into two months, which turned into a full-on virtual world. We leaned on our pets for support and exhausted ourselves with online learning. The virtual world was something we all loved and were simultaneously grateful for, the connection outside of the household. We went on walks and bike rides, squeezed our dogs, and even took sanity drives just to get out of the house. We overcrowded our houses, read uplifting books, and connected with the outside world through a really weak internet connection. So we never missed a chance to complain about the weather. April in Ohio got me like... Winter turned to spring and driving quickly became a luxury just to get out of the house. There were people fighting for their lives, but I was lucky the worst thing that happened to me was a minor rollerblading accident. The new norm was online learning, making coffee at home, leaning on our pets, exercising at home, and leaning on our pets again. Okay, then come here. This is my video. I don't want to be in your stupid video. <laughs> what? We adapted to exercising at home, connecting through the internet, and the Starbucks drive-thru became our best form of therapy. And we drove each other a little crazy. Oh hey! <laughs> <laughs> there were long days, but the end of May looked relatively hopeful for the end of COVID-19. We socially distanced with friends, got excited about new author releases, and drank a lot of coffee. Our computers were our lifelines, and the Starbucks drive through kept us sane. We celebrated holidays at home, connected with friends virtually, and never paid attention in classes. We found happiness in donuts and balanced that out with warm evening walks. <laughs> Naturally, at the end of May, I introduced my parents to my pandemic boyfriend. The first thing he asked was, should I wear a mask when I come up to the door? So 2020. As time passed, we adapted to online learning, learned to love takeout dinners, and we were hopeful for a better tomorrow. Two weeks turned into, we don't know when this pandemic is ending, so we adapted to working and living from home. June was surprisingly peaceful. We had dinner with friends, studied at home, spent time with our pets, studied some more, and somewhat enjoyed an empty restaurant. We soaked in the sun, went on our daily therapy, I mean Starbucks runs, and made our backyard into our very own restaurant. Meeting online started to feel normal, and we learned to slow down and enjoy the people around us that matter most. Outdoor dining moved from restaurants to backyard. We moved out of college apartments, soaked in the sun, and only wore makeup when we absolutely had to. Did I mention we never paid attention in class? We all adapted to our new normal, but patiently waited for life to go back to what it was. Nothing felt normal, but it finally felt like we were getting a hang of this virtual life. July was just as blissful as June and filled with a long-awaiting visit from a long-lost household member. I'll cherish this next moment forever because I didn't know it was one of the last. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Learned to love our at-home workouts and spent late nights cherishing the ones that had a role. I'm in danger. I made big moves in my career and captured Nate in his prime just before getting food poisoning from Chipotle. We found peace on our back porch, created a newfound love for afternoon walks, and we finally learned to slow down, take a deep breath, and enjoy the moment in time that we were currently in. One take of gas lasted an entire summer, and back porches, walks, and Starbucks became our new form of therapy. Car rides, breaks on the back porch, trading off whose houses to spend the evening at, online learning, Starbucks runs, and the introduction to new foods at home were officially our new normal. But despite foodborne illness, Chipotle still had our hearts. I love you, burrito! I'm just gonna be honest, August sucked. It started off celebrating a birthday at home. Hey. Reading new books, Starbucks runs as usual, and car rides to keep us sane. But things took a turn for the worst when our childhood puppy decided it was time to leave this world. 14 years too short. Fly high, baby girl.
We turned in our last virtual assignments and accepted our master's degrees online. We made the best of what we had and accepted degrees from yet another virtual gathering. We began to wonder if this COVID thing was really that bad after all. Starbucks and Chipotle were still number one in our hearts. We enjoyed picnics outdoors, I worked in my startup company, and we left the house whenever we could. I continued to prep for my startup pitch to my investors and stressed about what my life might look like in a couple of months. Life started to pick up and things started to feel normal until everything took a turn for the worst. September started out good, but ended up being bittersweet. We continued to celebrate at home, but held our breath with the news that a family member was diagnosed with COVID-19. On September 6th, my mom's dad was admitted into the ICU because of COVID-19. We couldn't see him, we couldn't talk to him, we could only drop stuff off with hope that the nurses would take it to him and care for him. These next few days were a mix of emotions. I ended up having an extremely successful pitch and got five out of five investors initially invested into my product idea. While celebrating my successes, we were told that my once perfectly healthy grandfather two weeks ago wasn't gonna make it through the night. He held on for me that evening, but absolutely broke our hearts that next day. We each were able to tell him goodbye over the phone. We asked him for a sign to let us know he was okay, and he set a flood of monarch butterflies over our house like we've never seen before. In the middle of all of this, Nate got his license. It's one thing to experience a pandemic, but it's a completely different experience when you lose someone to that 1%. You never think it's gonna happen to you, but sometimes it does. Our hearts were absolutely broken. When COVID-19 is over, things will go back to normal, but never for us. October was surprisingly beautiful. By now, we'd embrace spending all of our time at home. We'd learn to cherish our morning coffee time and to loathe words like quarantine, social distancing, six feet apart, and COVID-19 in hopes for a better future. I set up my LLC and felt extra grateful for the handyman in my life. We embraced holiday traditions, enjoyed crisp blue skies, and spent evenings watching movies. We were always extra grateful for when Elena filled the house with baked good smells. My first business was moving forward and a 20 minute Starbucks drive through line was never a big deal. There were more drives, more fall walks, and of course, strategically cooling off baked goods with the chilly October evening. Roni's monthly flea medicine turned into an oddly entertaining event and spending time at home didn't seem so bad after all. We celebrated the last birthday of the year on the back porch and we also blew out candles the best way we knew how. We made the best of what we had, and I finally had a chance to get my first camera and explore my love for photography and videography. And we seriously never miss an opportunity to get Starbucks. Going out in public for fun was still a hard no, but we've grown used to each other's extended company. November was actually pretty fun, and we found joy in blaming Parker for everything that went wrong in the house when he wasn't there. We braced ourselves for a historical election and feared for our democracy, because honestly, what else would you do in 2020? Just like clockwork, the corn was taken off and we soaked up the last bits of a beautiful October. Mom got a new car and we felt extra grateful this year for the blessings in our lives and food on the table. Elena got carded for the first time and Logan was off to Arizona to finish off his job at West. Some days felt longer than others and half the time we didn't even know what day of the week it was. The holidays can bring on stress, especially when your Christmas tree dies, 2020 style. We decked out the house and we embraced each other's company. We never miss an opportunity for an occasional gut bomb. And yes, there we are drinking Starbucks. We also had a good laugh.
Bernie hated her reindeer ears. We started dessert season early and we never missed a chance for an evening movie. The last month of 2020 was filled with nothing short of coffee, baked goods, and my first meeting with my manufacturer. Christmas lights were put up just on cue and Logan returned back home from Arizona for the foreseeable future. I think it's safe to say the entire world looks back on 2020 with a newfound perspective of how quickly our lives can change. We were all struck by the world's ability to adapt and conquer. We found hope in the development of a vaccine faster than ever seen in history, and our heroes went from stars in Marvel movies to frontline workers, including my mom. We have a newfound perspective for something as simple as taking in a deep breath. We remember the ones we lost too soon to COVID-19, including my grandpa and my mom's dad, as we continue to carry out their traditions. 2020 broke our hearts so we would listen. We learned to slow down, live in the moment, and make the best of what we had around us. In 2021, I hope we learn to be kinder, more selfless, slow down, and apply the lessons that a year never forgotten has marked us with. This was never the story I intended to tell, but this is a year that changed us forever. Thank you for watching.